Have you ever been listening to someone speaking or maybe even been reading an email from them and you're following along just fine, then all of a sudden you find yourself on a completely different topic and you have no idea how you got there? Now, this might be because you dozed off for a few seconds, or it might be because the other person didn't effectively indicate that they were going to change topics. Now, we're not saying that every time we're speaking to someone, we have to put up our hands and say, topic change, every time we're going to do that. But generally, the way we speak and the way we write, we use some type of mechanism to bridge between one topic and another. There are a lot of ways a speaker can transition to a new topic. It can be verbal, and it can be via body language. We, right now, are talking about what we can do with PowerPoint. We'd hope that the content is well-written and organized, so a topic shift should never occur within a slide. If that's true, then that means transitions should always occur between slides. The transition itself is applied to the slide to which we will be transitioning to. There's a lot of creative disagreement, though, between presentation professionals. Some believe that transitions are not required between all slides. They think that if slides just appear, that that's perfectly acceptable and it's a clean way to present. Those people think that adding transitions between slides just clutters it up and detracts from the message. Others think that doing it that way, without transitions between each slide, is very basic, and while there's nothing wrong with it, it just doesn't give a polished impression. Because we need to work with them a bit, we're going to work with the second approach and say that we want transitions between all of our slides. Then we're going to add special ones to indicate a major topic shift when that occurs. We're working in our Niagara Falls presentation from the Chapter 15 Working Files folder. We can apply transitions from the normal view or the slide sorter view. For our purposes, we're going to go ahead and move to the slide sorter view. Because we want to apply the same transition to all of the slides, all we need to do is press Control A, which of course is the keyboard shortcut for Select All, and then activate PowerPoint's Transitions tab, which is dedicated, of course, just to transitions. From here, we can take a look at the entire transition gallery. It actually has some phenomenal and amazing stuff. Now, I know there are a lot of very fun things here, and it's okay to click around and see all the things that we can do, but then we need to temper ourselves. Transition should be simple and fairly subtle for the most part. We can see these are actually categorized into things like subtle and exciting. We even have some that are good for dynamic content, but we're going to keep it simple. And the one that's used most often and is also the most effective is the simple fade transition. Because we have all of our slides selected, it's going to go through and apply a little preview of this to all of our slides. So if you have 140 slides or so, this could take a second. Just be patient, eventually it will finish. We know in a couple of ways that a transition has been applied to a slide. First of all, when a slide is selected, it will highlight that particular transition in the gallery. Secondly, just by looking at the thumbnail, if there's a small star in the bottom right corner, that also tells us that a transition has been applied. Now, we said that transitions should be simple and they should also not take a lot of time. There are a few settings we can work with, however, all on the Transitions tab in the Timing group. Half of them I'm going to suggest we don't use at all, at least not on a regular basis. The other two we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about. The two that I do not recommend we use are sounds, and advanced slides. Honestly, adding little sound bites like applause as we transition into a sales chart, for example, is kind of cheesy and unprofessional. At least that's my opinion. I don't use them at all for that. On the other hand, we very well could and probably will use timings for our slides, but we won't do it here. What we would need to do is say to automatically advance the slide after so many seconds. If I asked you how many seconds each of these slides should stay up on screen, you'd probably give me an answer somewhere between 5 and 55 seconds. They'd all be guesses, and none of them would be right. No offense intended. It's not that we don't want to use timings, we just don't want to apply them this way. We probably will use timings for our slides, but we won't do it here. There are better ways to apply timings to slides, and they're part of the slideshow setup. So nix on these two options, which are sound, and advanced slides automatically. We have to remember that we really do not want to invest a lot of time on transitions. Their purpose is to get us from one slide to another. And if that is the most important or memorable part of our presentation, we have big problems. If necessary though, we can easily do a couple of adjustments. One of them is to adjust the duration. If we make this faster or slower, it makes the transition itself 
faster or slower. That can be an okay thing if we're trying to convey a certain mood or feeling. The other thing that we might want to do is to work with effect options. From this dropdown, we can usually adjust the direction or shape in which our transitions occur. In this case, we're using a fade, but we can fade directly from one slide to another, called smoothly, or we can fade through black, which is a much more dramatic effect. So we'll leave smoothly selected. If we're going to use transitions on all of the slides in our presentation, we need to do that first. Once that's done, we can then focus our attention on transitions between specific slides that we want to emphasize. One of our major shifts in this presentation is between the section we have discussing basic information about Niagara Falls and the section that is primarily a picture show. I'm thinking it's going to be okay to add a little bit of drama there, so let's go ahead and select slide number 14, which is where that slideshow starts. Once it's selected, we can add a dramatic transition by displaying our gallery one more time. And of course, we want to take a look near the bottom where all of the exciting ones are located. And let's try the one called Cube. Now, if you want to see how this is going to look, just pay attention as we click. Pretty cool, huh? These are some of the later animations and transitions that have been applied with the later versions of PowerPoint, where we've gotten much more elegant than it was in earlier versions. This transition definitely allows us to see that we're doing something different. It attracts our attention if it was waning a bit. We're curious as to what is now happening on screen, and for this purpose, that is exactly what we want to occur. We aren't going to use these dramatic transitions all the time. In fact, we won't use them most of the time, but we do want to have PowerPoint help us physically and mentally move from one slide to another at certain times by providing a little visual cue for our audience. This lets them know that we're moving from one topic to another. And if there happens to be just a little bit of eye candy on occasion too, that's okay, as long as it's used sparingly.